Welcome back, this is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel and I'm now going to be going through this mechanics paper from June 2022. Question number five now, from this is International A-Level LXL M1 paper. Now this question here is about a uniform rod AB. So this is a question about moments and they told us that the rod is uniform. Now that's an important word here in this question. It has a length of five meters and a mass of five kilograms. The rod rests in equilibrium, another very important word in this question, in a horizontal position on two supports C and D, where AC equals one meter and DB equals two meters, as shown in figure two. They tell us that a particle of mass 10 kilograms in pla is placed at the rod at A, and a particle of mass M kilograms is placed on the rod at B. The rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium, so it's still in equilibrium after that. Find in terms of M the magnitude of the reaction of the rod at C. So I've just got the diagram drawn here so we can see everything as we are showing our steps. So we have um, a few things here. We have a mass at A, which we know its mass is 10 um, kilograms. So this is going to be um, 10 G. Um, this is going to be 10 G newtons, the force. We also have a mass at B, which we don't know its mass. This is mg newtons. And we know that it's a uniform rod, meaning that the weight of the rod is evenly distributed along its length. It's uniform. So we can take the center of mass as its geometric center. So if it's 5 meters long, exactly 2.5 meters in from the ends, is going to be where we can take that the mass of the rod to be acting from and it's a mass five kilograms so that's five g newtons that's going to be its weight acting right in the center then we also have these two supports at c and d so we're going to have a reaction at c and a reaction at d which we don't know that's not given to us so rc and rd okay so those that's all the information that we have in this question drawn on our on our diagram Okay, so now it says, find in terms of M the magnitude of the reaction on the rod at C. Okay, so we've got to find in terms of M. So our answer has to have M in it. We've got to find the reaction at C. Now, we know this rod is in equilibrium. That's the other important word. Okay, it's in equilibrium. That means the upward forces and the downward forces are balanced out. And it also means that the moments acting in the clockwise direction and the moments acting in the anti-clockwise direction about any point we choose whether it's on the rod or out of the rod they will be balanced out the clockwise moments about any point will be the same value as the anti-clockwise moments because it's an equilibrium so we can choose to take moments about any point we want to on this rod now what's sensible for us to do here because we have two things that are unknown for us m is something which is unknown but we have to express it in terms of m so we there's no problem to have m still in our answer but we want to find what the reaction at c is so what we can do to try to make this very easy is take moments about the point d because the moments of a force the moment of a force is the magnitude of the force times its distance from the place that you're taking moments about. So if we're taking moments about D, the distance of the force acting through D, the reaction force at D, is going to be zero. So the moment of the, the reaction force D about D is going to be zero. So that eliminates this force, and therefore we were left with only this as our unknown in terms of the N, M. So let's take moments about D. And what we can say is it's an equilibrium, so the clockwise and the anticlockwise moments are equal. So if I take moments about D, if I think about the clockwise moments, well, you've got this one, which is 2 times mg, that's going to have a, a turning effect in this clockwise direction. So it's mg times 2, so we can say 2 mg. We also have this force, if I take moments about D, this is going to also have this clockwise effect. These two forces will have an anticlockwise effect. So I've got to add this distance which is the distance of, um, let me just get this nice and neat. So I need this distance, the distance of the reaction force at C, 
from the point D. And we know that the total length of this rod is 5 meters. That's 2 meters there, 1 meters there, that's 3 meters, that's another 2 meters left. So that's going to be 2 times RC. Oops, 2 times RC. And that's equal to the anticlockwise moments, which will be given by these two forces. Okay. So about D, this distance here from or from A to D, that distance we can see is 3 meters. So that's 3 times 10 G plus, and we got this distance here. Well, as we mentioned earlier, this distance here is 2.5 meters. Okay, this is because the, the force is acting, the weight is acting exactly in the center. So that means the difference between these two here is going to be, this distance here is going to be 0.5 meters. That's 0 0.5 meters because that's 2.5 minus 2. So that's 0 0.5 multiplied by the weight, which is 5G. So that is an equation. The clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments are equal because this is an equilibrium. So we can now write down or we can write down an expression for RC. So I can say that 2 times RC is equal to that's 30 plus 2.5, that's 32.5G minus 2MG. Um, so we can say RC is equal to 32.5G divided by 2, which is, um, that's going to be 16.25G, and 2MG divided by 2, which is MG. Okay, so that's 16.25G minus MG, and that's in Newtons. That's the answer to part A of this question. We found the reaction force at C, at C. okay, um, using that. Now, we want to find the reaction magnitude of the reaction force at D. Now, because we, in terms of M again, so we don't need to find what M right now, so we could do a very similar thing if we wanted to. We could take moments, this time about C, which will eliminate this force, and then we can find, you know, the clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments are equal, and we'll be left with RD. But there's something a lot easier that we can do, because I know, if it's an equilibrium, also not only the moments balanced, that the upward and downward forces, it's an equilibrium, so the forces upwards and downwards must also be balanced. So we can say that the upward forces, which is RC plus RD, those are the only forces acting up, are equal to the all the downward forces together, which is 10G plus 5G plus MG. Okay, so we can say that we know what RC is. It's 16.25G minus MG. That's what RC is. We have to find what RD is. Okay, so plus RD equals that's 15G plus MG. So now we can subtract these two from both sides. So we have RD equals that's 15G minus 16.25. That's minus 1.25G. And you got MG, you add MG to both sides. That's going to be plus 2MG, sorry. Plus 2MG. So therefore, we can say that the reaction at D is going to be 2mg minus 1.25g newtons. So that's the reaction at D in terms of M. And that's the reaction at C in terms of M. So there's the answer to part B. So that's A and B done. Now we're going to move on to part uh, C. Okay, so for part C here, um, what we have is, it tells us hence or otherwise, find the range of possible values of M. So here's the situation we have from the previous um, parts of the question. We know that the reaction force at C is given by this expression, and the reaction force at D is given by this expression. And of course, as M changes, the values of these will change. As you can see, there's M in both of them. Now, what would it mean? What does it mean by the range of possible values of m? Now, what it means is the range of possible values of m such that this rod remains in equilibrium, because that's one of the things they meant. This is an equilibrium. So, as m gets bigger and bigger, it will they will reach a point where this will tip like a seesaw about d. If m gets so heavy that you know it can't be balanced out by these these forces anymore what's going to happen is going to tilt like this, about about D. 
Okay, that's what's going to happen. It's going to lift off from the support C and it's going to tilt about um, D. Okay, so we want to find the point at which it is still in equilibrium. It is still in equilibrium, but it's just about to lift off from C. So it's just about to tilt on D. It's just about to tilt on D. So we want to find when it is the maximum value of M is going to be when it is when the rod we can say when the rod is on the point of just about to on the point of tilting tilting on D okay when it's just about to tilt on D Okay, and when it's just about to tilt on D, that means it's still in equilibrium. So these equations still apply because these are for when it's in equilibrium. However, it's just about to lift off off from C. So that means that means when the reaction at C is equal to zero. Okay, so if I can equate the reaction at C to zero, so I can say 16.25G minus MG is equal to zero. I can get rid of the G's because divide both sides by G. We're left with M equals 16.25. So that's the value of M. You can say the maximum value of M. Okay, uh, that's the first part of the question. Then it says, it says find the, the range of possible values of M. Now there's another situation where M is so small that it's going to do the opposite. That it's going to tilt like this. Because it's so small that it can't counterbalance the 10G on this side. And it will tilt about C. And it will lift off from D. Okay, so in a similar kind of situation here, this time M is so small, we can say M is its minimum value. Okay, when the rod is on the point of, on the point of tilting. On C. So that means when the reaction at D is equal to zero. So this time we take the reaction at D, which we found from before, it's 2mg minus 1.25g. So we, we got 2mg minus 1.25g, and that's equal to zero. And we can again divide both sides by G. We're left with 2m is equal to 1.25. So m is equal to 1.25 divided by 2, which is going to be 0. 0.625 is that right so that's uh, 0 6 yeah 25 okay we can make sure we can say 1.25 divided by 1.25 whoops divided by 2 just to make sure 0 5 over 8 which is 0 0.625 so therefore we can say that the range of values of m we should write this as an inequality because it can be between those values. That's just the minimum value. Okay, so we can say the range of values is between 0 0.625, the lower value, up to and including the up highest value, which is 16.25. We don't have to put newtons here, okay, because, or, or kilograms here because M already is defined as in kilograms. So that, those are the range of values of M. Uh, for which this stays in equi equilibrium. So they didn't mention that, okay? But M is, uh, you know, they told us in the first part of the question that this is an equilibrium, okay? So basically, they didn't mention anything about tilting here, which they normally do. They're trying to test your understanding here of this situation. So that's how you're going to deal with this. The ma maximum value of M is such that this remains in equilibrium, but this can't get any bigger, means the reaction at C has become zero, but it's still in equilibrium, so these equations still apply. And the minimum value of M is such that um, it's just about to tilt on C because it's, you know, like a seesaw, just about to tilt down this way. The value of M is so small that it's just about to tilt. It hasn't started tilting yet, and the reaction at D is zero, so it's still in equilibrium, but the reaction at D is zero. These equations apply, but the reaction at D is zero, so this is equal to zero, and that's how we found the value of M for the maximum and minimum case um, and so therefore m can be anywhere between those values and it will still be in equilibrium okay so i hope that was clear it's a bit of a 
part C maybe through through some students maybe off, but you know you have to understand that you know of course this thing has to be in equilibrium, as mentioned in the first part of the question. So those are the values of M that you need to find. So I I think maybe it would have been kind if they mentioned find the range of possible possible values of M for which the rod remains in equilibrium. That might be um, more clear as a question, but um, you know. It's something that you should assume because they tell us in the first part of the question that the rod remains horizontal and in equilibrium. So M is such that it stays in equilibrium. Okay, so there's the answer for this question. Other questions that you might want to see from this particular paper, I have collected together in the playlist for the paper which will appear, well, the link for it will appear in this area over here. The questions from M1 about moments I've collected together in the playlist that should appear over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle that will appear and you can also find other uh, material links for which are in the description of this video thank you for watching and see you soon